Okay, today I will talk about promises. It's not new thing. Everyone probably works with it and works every single day. So a bit of history. The term itself was announced, not announced, but proposed in late 70s. And the first promises were used in late uh, early 80s. So in JavaScript, it's a bit later, but JavaScript is pretty new. And Node community was thinking about it and trying out, but settled on uh, Node standard first error callbacks. And async library, meantime, helped a lot to orchestrate everything because you had the waterfall, the series, the parallel stuff. Um, and meantime, there still was need for all the promises. So the libraries like QVan and Bluebird kind of started taking over the world. Q and Van, I think they stopped developing it like five, six years ago. Bluebird, surprisingly, is still actively developed. Like they had three, four releases this year. And with S6, we got the promises of generators. And just a bit later, we got the syntactic sugar async and await. So that's where we started. That's a problem where everyone saw it. And that's actually not the worst that I have seen. Like it fits in one page, you still can figure out. It's not like a five pages long nested true hell. So what promises promise to us? So that callbacks will never be called before completion of the current run of the JavaScript event loop. So that's the example. Uh, we create a promise. And before we create, we spit out the one. After that, we get a console log two because we create promise and it starts execution right away. After that, we get console log three just because it finishes the current stack. And after that, it pushes from the task queue uh, the resolved promise and we get four. Another thing it promises the callbacks added with then, even after the success or failure of asynchronous operation will be called as previous. So in this example, we are using resolved promise twice. So we get the same, no, not the same, sorry. We resolve it right away. So we have a one after the two and three after attaching the callback and the four and only after our callbacks are executed. And once we have multiple, they will be executed in the way they were, they were have been attached. So this example is pretty straightforward. It's a one, two, we finish the current run. And after that, three, four, five, six. Mm, so common mistakes with promises are not returning anything because if you are chaining your next step should it, not that should it expect something and if you're not returned if, if you're ignoring the result of previous step you probably can combine those two steps another thing is not returning a promise so if you have chain promises you're basically what you're doing you're splitting the chain in two chains that run starts running in parallel so you're losing the error handling and other problems might start becoming obvious. And when value falls through, it's when you pass to then or catch something that is not a function. So in this example, as you see, it's a straight, for straight promise. So it's non-function. And what happens, the last then receives the resolved value of the first promise. So easy fix is that we have a function that returns a promise. And in that case, chain goes on and we get the result we expected. And not handling errors, it's like uh, everything else. But in with promises, it's especially easy to miss it because it 
It doesn't throw in your face the exceptions and everything, so you might be lazy and say, oh, it works, happy path is fine. But after some time, it just silently starts breaking. And another thing is assuming that catch will never fail. So for simple example, I made on purpose reference error to happen here. And as a result, we get the unhandled promise rejection. So to catch that, we need catch, catch, because we can chain catch, then catch, 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 then it's multiple things. Danger zone, nesting. So we might get into the same callback hell situations if we're not careful. Basically, promises are not solving the problems we have. It's a code problem if you have something too much. Chaining promises is not a bad thing. Like if you do it, it's, it doesn't mean anything that you're doing wrong, but you need to be careful more than if you have a, like a flat <coughs> promises chain. Because if you return, forget to return, you split the chains. Another thing here commented out, for example, if, if I will uncomment it, what will happen that whatever will reject here, like happen that, this catch will make it as a result. So basically it will make bad thing, good thing. So it's switching flips, switches. I think and await. So async function returns a promise which will be resolved with the value returned by the async function or rejected with the exception. Uh, so under the hood, it's not exactly the same promises, but it returns the promise. So that's that way you can easily integrate and it works nice with the rest of your promises. So you can get the constructor that way. So if you use it, I think there is a problem. Like if you want to play with it, I think it doesn't include the parent closure. So you're losing all the variables around it. So can you mix it? So basically you can await for the promise and the other way you can, like that async function is venable too. So the benefits, so for example, this one, we get a post and after that we use post.user to get retrieve the user. And in the next step, oh, I need a post too. So it's not available. So either I need to wrap in a anonymous function and pass it down twice, like to both user and the post, or I can like a, create semi-global variable, which sucks. Like it's almost, I would treat it almost like a global variable. Uh, another way you can chain it. In that case, you get both. But uh, again, in this simple case, it's only two things, but you might get like five things, seven things. And in that case, it might get crazy. With await async syntax, it's pretty straightforward. It's two lines and you have everything available. One, I would say downside with async await that you might get too many variables in your scope. So the naming at some point can be difficult because there could be similar things. If you use promises, you get smaller closures, so it's easier to name things, but with error handling, uh, async await, basically what it does, it returns your forgotten errors. So with promises, it's, it's easy. You, you miss catch and everything is fine. If you don't subscribe for uncut exception events, you even don't know that it happened. With async functions, it rejects if you have like reference error or something else going wrong. wrong. <coughs> so bo both those examples, the, the, the biggest difference, this is synchronous function that returns async function. 
and this is asynchronous function that returns asynchronous function result. So for the consumer, it's basically the same thing, almost, too small. I, I have another slide to explain why it's different. But the, the, the biggest difference here that if something happens here, like a reference error or that some sync magic has frozen exception or something, this thing fails. On an asynchronous function, we'll reject with that exception. So it's a bit better, easier to deal with things. So returning a wait or returning just a, pr a promise. So the difference here would be like this keyword await, either have it or not. But in this, the difference is that if you have a wait, so if the exception is thrown somewhere in the way in the method can read file async, it will be handled here. Like it will go and return false. If you don't include a wait, what will happen? It will return the function. So basically, it doesn't matter if can read file async fails or, or not, it will be returned to the consumer of the vault function. And in that case, our description already lies about it because we can have true false or an exception. So that's the difference, return a wait or just return straight promise. So about the concurrency, let's say we have two async functions that one resolves after one second, another after two seconds, and we don't really care what they return. So we have a console log zero, it's a, like a start, and after one second, so we have a one that will be spit it out after one second, and once we wait for the second one, it will happen after three seconds because it, it is created at this moment, and after that it waits for two seconds and finishes. The second example is the difference that we create two promises here and we await later. So what will happen now, like we have a start and after one second, the first one resolves. And the sec once we go to the second one, it resolves after two seconds. So the difference is now we shaved off one second. So the difference is that we create the promises I had before consuming the result. And here we create it as, as we go. And another example is it's exactly the same, only the sequence is different. S2 is awaited first, so in that case we have a two seconds pause. And after that S1 result, not res we get the result right away, just because it was faster than S2, but it goes in the sequence we are writing code. So pretty, not super new, but still new thing, all settled. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Bec in previous job, I, we needed to do a bunch of calls. And if, if we use promise all and one fails, it just screws up everything else. So we basically what we needed to do, either resolve every single time, just log the errors, and or we can, I will show the another example. And this one allows you to actually exactly say this, this request failed or not the promises failed or something else or that others succeeded. So it's basically much, much easier if you have like a bunch of external calls so not a polyfill. So one ca trick is to do that you basically map all the promises and just catch them. Because catch will, after the catch, it's success because no, no one fails here, nothing fails here, but this trick, oh shit, sorry. And, but it's hard as you see the result is you have a string, you have arrays, you, you can have everything. Like you, if you have multiple different requests, you can have anything. 
and how you can distinguish this error from array. Like it's, it's, it's much harder, unless you have like a very similar structured data, but again, you're filtering and not explicitly know what you have there. So tips, don't use when or can fail callbacks, uh, just use when and catch because the catch part will catch the problems in your van if you do van catch. Otherwise, it will, you will get uh, unhandled exception, unhandled promising. Okay, race is very useful for handling timeouts. For example, if you have a API or the library that you can't change the timeouts or there is we had it actually, there is no timeout. So you just create promise that fails after set amount of time. And after that, you just do raise. You do your request and just include your timeout. And that's how you can finish sooner timeout. So since it's kind of better, how you can easily migrate your code without big banging or too much pain. So with callbacks, you have a few options. You can just create a, an immediately invoked async function. In that case, you get access to a wait because a wait is not available to you if it, it's not async function. And once you start using async await, you kind of start feeling that, oh, I need to refactor this function to async because it, it just screws up all the chain of calls. The other way I like much more, you pull out basically you just all your logic and just have leave a small wrapper as a promise and pull out all the logic here. Why it's good because basically you have another async function so you can slowly start migrating your calls. Wherever you're await or you want to use the promise, you use this, the legacy stuff can still use this. Once you migrate it and you see that the callback became gray, you can just kill it. The other way, can you await or ban the callback function? So just a bit after async await was introduced, util promiseify was made available. So basically it's pretty easy. You just throw in as that original, the function that expects uh, callbacks, first error style, and it creates a wrapper for you. And uh, after that you can await it. <sighs> Questions? Uh, and if any, uh, okay, so the question is uh, if, if the trick of similar to all settled can be used for the any, right? Yeah. So any fails if all fail. So if at least one succeeds, any succeeds. So yeah. that trick won't work because it makes all resolved no matter what happens. So it's all, but with all settled, you can do it. Do you think so? And uh, the Chrome already supports it like five, four versions and Firefox, I think, one or two. So it's it's not there yet, but. Any other questions for Mr. Kitty? All right, well, thanks for talking, Ron.